Because we've been talking flight just behind my back for a long time. But now I said it right here. Right. I think that you, you probably won't say it again. Hey, what's up, everyone? Danny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a gaming PC that I recently put together for roughly $300, primarily with secondhand parts. Uh, this build features a more recent architecture that uses DDR4 memory. So in terms of upgrade paths, there's going to be a bit more options when desired in the future. Uh, it's also built using a tempered glass case, the BitPhoenix Nova TG, which I believe is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, tempered glass cases on the market. Huge thanks to BitPhoenix for sending it over for me to check out and use in this build. I was really curious to see what one of the lowest priced tempered glass cases had to offer, and I'll discuss a little bit more about that later on in the video, but let's jump into the build. First let's go over the parts and how much they all cost. Everything except for the case was bought by me, and prices will reflect the total amount that I paid. So that means not only the cost of the item, but also shipping and taxes when applicable. The case was provided by BitPhoenix, so that didn't cost me anything, but to play fair, I'll account for its value based on what I can find online for the same product. Uh, so onto the parts. The processor I plan to build around is the Intel i3-6100. It's a lock CPU with 2 cores and 4 threads and no turbo boost with a stock clock of 3.7GHz. It can be overclocked if you have the right Z170 motherboard and BIOS version, but for this build I do not, so we're going to be running it stock. The i3-6100 is more than 2 years old as of making this video, so you're not going to be finding this brand new anymore for a reasonable price. Most places have it for above release MSRP, so yeah, that's not worth it. But, if you can grab one in the used market for around $70 or less, I'd say it's a good buy for a 1080p gaming system. I got this on Hardware Swap for $65 shipped. To cool the CPU I'm using a stock Intel heatsink. It's nowhere close to being the best performing cooler out there and it's definitely not winning any aesthetic awards, but it's more than enough for the 6100 running at stock. I already have a bunch of these on hand, so I didn't need to buy this, but for the sake of the build cost, I'd say a fair price would be around 5 bucks, as you can find brand new ones for around $78 on Amazon, so estimating my used one for a few bucks less seems fair. I'm pairing the 6100 with the Biostar B150 motherboard that I bought on sale for roughly $27 a piece on Newegg. There's absolutely nothing special about this board, I'm using it solely because of the low price. The difference between this and the most entry level chipset for 1150 sockets is a few minor features, such as the couple of extra USB 3.0 ports, extra SATA interfaces, and PCIe lanes. Nothing that would really hinder the build if they weren't there. For the graphics card, I'm using a 4GB GTX 770 WinForce 3X from Gigabyte. This card was released in May of 2013, so it's 4.5 years old now, but it's still one of my favorite cards to recommend given the performance and how much the price has dropped in the used market. This is going to contend with the GTX 1050 Ti. They're very similar in performance, within 5 or so percent of each other in most titles. The 1050 Ti hovers around $150 brand new as of making this video, with the used market not too far off from that. The GTX 770, however, is old enough that they're easier to find used both online and local for cheaper. I picked mine up during a Craigslist ride along for $60, which is a great price even for a 2GB variant, but this one being a 4GB version made the deal even sweeter. If you can't find one for that cheap, I'd say this card can still be a great deal up to $80. For RAM, I was able to get 8GB of used DDR4 even in the horrible state of the RAM market. Now, they're not pretty, but functionally, they do what I need them to do and they fit the bill, so I went with them. This is a 2x4 kit of Hynix RAM at 2133MHz that I got on Hardware Swap for $45. My recommendation is to look for used RAM if you can before buying the bullet and buying new, as they're one of the safer components to buy used in my opinion. The power supply I went with is a used Corsair CX500M. You may be asking, doesn't the GTX 770 need a 600W power supply? That's what Nvidia recommends on their website. The keyword there is recommend, but they've built some conservatism in that number to cover the chance that some people will pair it with some junk no-name power supply with performance nowhere near the rated claims. While the CX500M isn't a top tier power supply, it's going to work for this build, especially at the price point of $15 I was able to get it at locally on Craigslist. Quickly fast forwarding to the complete build, it only ends up pulling 300 watts under full load during stress tests, and that's from the wall, so the system itself is using maybe 250 to 275 watts max. So that means for everyday use in gaming, you're going to be putting even less load on the power supply because that's nowhere near as demanding as stress tests. Corsair kind of dropped the ball though when it came to aesthetics on this one. The modular cables look good in all black, but they left ketchup and mustard on the FAT24 pin. Poor shame. For the hard drive, I went with a used 2TB Hitachi Ultrastar from a batch of data center pools. I really wanted to get an SSD into the build, but I couldn't find anything reasonably priced at either 120 or 240GB, so I went without one since it's a pretty easy upgrade to add to the system in the future should a deal come along. At 2TB, space will not be an issue for this build, and at least the drive is 7200RPM, which is a noticeable difference over 5400RPM drives, and with frequent deals at $30 on eBay, I would definitely recommend these. Just be sure to check the smart health once you get them to make sure there's no signs of upcoming failure. Bringing all these components together is the Bitphoenix Nova TG. 
I never built in a white case before, so I wanted to change it up this time around, and I think it looks great. It's a very clean and minimal case on the outside. Material-wise, it's primarily made out of steel, with plastic used on the front panel, toolless drive caddies, meshing, fans, and fan filter. The tempered glass side panel is 4mm thick and has a slight dark tint to it, which is actually something I prefer because it can help cover up some of the imperfections, such as the ketchup and mustard cables and green ram sticks. The case does not have any rubber grommets for the routing holes, and the PCIe covers are the breakaway style. Not a big deal in my opinion, but this does show that money saving decisions were made to position the case where it is price wise. There are two 120mm fans that come with this case, a black one without LEDs on the front and a clear one with white LEDs in the back. In total, this case only supports three fans, so you can add another one to the front and then that's it. You're maxed out on fan real estate because there's no ventilation at the top panel. I wouldn't say this is an issue as I've built plenty of systems with only a front and rear fan, but what's more concerning is the lack of ventilation at the intake. This is a common problem with cases that offer aesthetics over functionality. The only place that this case sees intake openings is at the very narrow slits running down the sides of the front panel and through a small opening under the case, and that's it. This noticeably limits the amount of air that can be moved through the case as opposed to a mesh directly in front of the fan. Whether or not that's an issue will depend on what you're planning on putting into the build and how much you're overclocking. I did take this into account when planning this build out, and we're going to see how this case does when it comes to thermals and the benchmarks and discuss that later. For pricing, this can usually be found for $50 tax free, shipped, and no rebates for a majority of US residents. So now let's take a look at the build summary. The total comes in just under $300 with all the parts except for the case bought used. This does look a little odd because the case comes in at 1 6th of the total cost, which is pretty high to be spending on the case, but this kind of shows what happens if you try to squeeze any tempered glass case into a low cost build, even the cheapest offering, it'll eat up the budget fairly quickly. But overall, I think this is a pretty good group of parts for $300. Building in the Nova TG was a breeze, and there weren't any issues that came up worth mentioning. I actually have a silent build video where you can see snippets of each step that went into assembling this entire system. I'll have that in the title card in the description in case you want to get an idea of what it's like to work in this case. So now let's take a look at how the system performs. I used graphical settings in each test to achieve an average of 60 FPS at 1080p. I didn't mind if the frames dipped a little bit below that here and there, as long as it was still a smooth experience. For overclocking, I had the GTX 770 at an additional 50 MHz on the core and 200 on the memory. Pushing the core any further than that led to crashing and artifacting depending on the title, so it's not the best custom overclock, but it still should perform pretty well since it already has a decent factory overclock. So sit back, relax, and enjoy all the benchmarks because there are a lot of them.
So those were the benchmarks. For $300 and fitting a tempered glass case into the build, I'm really happy with the end product. Is this the perfect build? No, not necessarily, but they rarely ever are. I've put together better price and performance builds in the past, but it's impossible to always one-up them, uh, especially with the fluctuation in hardware prices that we've been seeing, as well as the variability that is the used market. While it's not the best build I've put together, I do think it's a good build that a lot of people would happily pay $300 for. Uh, the tempered glass case is definitely a subjective thing though, and if it's not your taste or style, then you can either save a bit of money by going non-tempered glass, or by adding a little bit more money to get a higher end one. Uh, addressing the thermals though, the case didn't perform too horribly. Uh, sure, it was a tad bit warm, but as you saw in the test, during gaming, the GPU never reached over 70 degrees, and that's with the default fan curve in the overclock, and the CPU hovered around the mid-60 to low 70s depending on the title. Now, is that a little bit on the warm side? Yeah, but is it a problem or is there like an issue and or dangerous at all? Uh, I don't think so. We're still pretty far from thermal throttling, so I think it's perfectly fine. Now, that's for the system that I put together though. I can't really comment on what would happen if you put like an FX9590 in there with an R9290X or something. It'd probably get pretty hot. Uh, but anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Let me know what your thoughts are on the system overall down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful at all, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new here and want to see more content from me. Um, I want to give a huge thanks to BitPhoenix for sending out their case to be featured in the build and for letting me check it out. Uh, and thank you all for watching and your continued support. I hope everyone has a happy holidays and I will see you all in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.